Good morning. Good morning. Or afternoon or wherever you all are. So I'm going to put the uh, meeting notes in the chat. If you're on a computer, please uh, add yourself to the attendance. If you're calling in, say who you are and somebody will add you. And we need two scribes. If I could have a volunteer, uh, two volunteers, that would be amazing. Um, this is a, going to be a working session. So we're shifting towards having, which we were doing about a year ago, where we would have presentations every other uh, meeting and then working sessions every other meeting so that um, you know people can decide if they have if they can't attend every meeting, they can kind of pick the meetings that they want to attend to, they want to attend, and then we can do a little more prep and be efficient with our, our meeting times. Um, we, the upcoming January meetings are visible in the uh, planned meetings, which is above the agenda. Um, I'm very excited to have Jonathan Meadows, who will be presenting open source training materials on January 8th, and Justin Cormack has agreed to facilitate that meeting. Um, would love to have um, people sign up for scribes ahead of the meeting and then we don't um, use have to use the meeting time for that. Um, but uh, you know we can always recruit people day of as needed. Um, so while people are gathering, if you have um, we're going to do check-ins um, in the working meeting, sessions. So we'll ask everybody to talk a little bit about what you've been up to um, security wise, uh, events you've been to, things we should know about. Um, and then um, also feel free to take this time to add something to the agenda. I see that um, some folks are doing that. Thank you so much. Put your name next to the item if uh, you have a thing. Um, Um, and then if uh, I, I'll talk about the intake priorities because that's my PR, although I hope Justin Capos will chime in because there's a couple of discussion points. I updated the PR just now with um, notes with like most of the things that people have uh, mentioned and I'm gonna put the uh, PR in here. So, um, so let's just start with check-ins. Thanks, Ash, we need one more scribe. I will start with a check-in, although most, my name is Sarah Allen, if anybody is new. Um, I am one of the SIG security co-chairs and um, I, JJ, Dan, and I are, um, maybe you all have noticed, but we are kind of taking turns with who is the responsible one to show up at meetings or make sure that we have a, a meeting facilitator. So um, I volunteered for um, December, January. And so um, JJ and Dan um, will attend when they can, but, um, but then it gives, you know, it gives us a little, um, uh, ability to um, also attend to other things in our lives. So, um, so I think all, um, all of my other updates are on the agenda. So next I will ask Emily to check in. Hello, um, I am coming back after not being available for these for a while. Um, I've got a couple of updates already on the agenda that I will talk about later. Great, thanks Emily. Tabitha. I'm still just getting my feet under me. Um, do you want to? I think you you're um, I think you're new to the group since KubeCon. Maybe we should each say like what we a little bit about any affiliation or what we do here at the SIG. Emily, you want to go back to like your role? Just to sure. mention it, people know your. Although we're going to um, come in the agenda. So yeah, I'll let it go. Be I'm that. doing a couple of different things. So far, I've been doing a lot of the governance 
and documentation updates within the repo, as well as the security day stuff with uh, Michael and a few others, but I will talk about that later. Thanks, Emily. Tabitha? Um, I really only represent myself, and at the moment, I'm just kind of seeing what's happening and seeing, you know, in what ways I contribute, in, the, in what ways I can contribute meaningfully in the time that I have available in my, you know, personal time. So, you know, I'm interested in, in doing security things in, uh, you know, in a lot of advancing what's going on with attacking Kubernetes. Great. Thanks, Tabitha. Justin Kapos. I'm Justin Kapos. I'm a professor at NYU. For those of you who don't know me, um, a big piece of news today is our Tough project um, reached graduated status. That was officially said. So hooray! Um, um, and yeah, I also do things related to security assessment and have been working on stuff with the landscape. But both of those are on the agenda, so we can just wait to talk about them. Great, Brandon Lum. Hi, um, I'm Brandon. I work on uh, triage related things as well as um, I participate in some security assessments with the SIG. Um, some security related updates. Um, we just got encrypted containers merged into Cryo. So if you're using OpenShift, you can actually play a bit. Uh, other than that, uh, I think most of the stuff that I want to talk about is in the agenda as well. I've been working with Justin Kappos on the um, new landscape stuff. Super. Justin Cormack. Hi. Um, so, yeah, last week I was in Seattle for the Notary V2 container signing and kickoff. We had lots and lots of people there. Thanks for everyone who came and everyone who died. I think we had um, 16 people in person, which was great. Um, and so it's a collaborative effort with Amazon, Microsoft, Red Hat, VMware, um, JFrog, um, and other uh, Docker and others to basically um, get um, make some changes to Notary to basically make the, the the primary aim is to have signatures in reg as in registry artifacts so they can be moved around, but there's a whole bunch of secondary. Um, requirements and we're doing requirements gathering process at the moment. Um, I'll paste the the working doc link in from there. But um, yeah, it was really nice to see so many people come together and work together on on a, on a CNCF project, which is just really nice. Fabulous. Um, Ash, I'll take okay, notes yeah. while you talk. Hi. So uh, I'm one of the maintainers of the Open Policy Agent project. Um, as far as updates are concerned, not too much this week. Uh, I'll be a reviewer for the Cloud Custodian Security Assessment, and also I've worked with the SIG on the OPA Security Assessment in the past. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Ash. Robert. Hi, yes. Uh, in terms of update, we're trying to get the Falco assessment kicked off. So uh, I'm trying to coordinate a kickoff uh, call January 6th and uh, also available to uh, participate in the Cloud Custodian assessment as well. Super. Um, Andre Vegas. Thanks, Andres. Andres Vega. I put you the S in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dialing in from the road, I am product manager at Cytel, currently involved in the self-assessment for Spiffy and Spire. New to the group since KubeCon, very interested to participate and contribute work to landscape, trail map work, as well as any secure by default efforts that the group puts on. Great, we are always brainstorming on how to be secure by default while not preventing everything. <laughs> um, Kapil. Did I pronounce your name right? Uh, coordinating, coordinating all the mute buttons. Uh, so my name's Kapil. Uh, I work at Amazon uh, on the uh, open source team. I'm also the primary maintainer on Cloud Custodian and uh, partly just trying to get used to the process. It looks like we've got a bunch of people signed up for reviewers, but we're still uh, looking for a lead security reviewer if anyone has uh, time in, uh, in early January. And, 
general focus on security is trying to secure cloud control planes. Great. Because none of us want our data leaked anymore. Yeah, it's a challenge. It's important stuff. Um, and then I don't know I'd, if we have anybody from any of the um, partner SIGs or working groups. I didn't hear anybody chime in there. Um, I well, will. just uh, from Paul, this is Robert from Policy Work Group. We did talk about uh, Cloud Custodian. Um, and I think, Bill, you had presented to us a few weeks back. Um, so there's interest, um, but we're a small group. So <laughs> I think I'm, I'm probably most of the bandwidth that the group has, but we'll try to get some other recruits. Um, but it could, be a, it could be a good landing place for the project eventually. Super. Thanks. That, one other update. Uh, Howard has put forward a, a proposal for KubeCon for an RBAC discussion. Um, so I, I don't know when they start giving feedback on those proposals. But as soon as I get it, I'll relay it here. Right, because the CFP closed. Yeah, yeah, he got it in just uh, just before the deadline. So I, I don't know how long it takes them to, to give up the thumbs yeah. up. Thumbs I think up. it's mid-January from memory. OK, great. I'll, I'll give an update as soon as I hear. Great. Thanks for that update. You provide a little glue between the afternoon meeting and the morning meeting. Um, so where is our, oh. Our agenda's at the top. So now, um, security assessment status. Um, I am going to share my screen. If I can, hang on just a sec. All right, so these are the minutes. Um, there's a PR that um, I really appreciate all of the feedback on um, this. I think we talked about it when it was a Google Doc some time back, but that was a, quite a while ago. Um, we, for those of you who are new, um, and most of the group is new since this started about a year ago, um, we started this assessment process um, about a year ago with Intoto, which was at one point um, proposed as a precondition to um, new projects entering. And then there was great discussions about how we prioritize these things and the TOC was new. And so Liz, who was appointed as our TOC liaison um, and Joe Beta, but Liz was the one we had a first meeting with, um, suggested that we go forth and not be blocked by the fact that the P TOC hadn't determined priorities. And so we worked through the process and we did in Toto and OPA. And now we have a, um, a prioritization rubric. So I just wanted to go through it um, to see if um, you know, there's any feedback, which I think here we are at. So what We've, um, we're changing the README to have a list of ongoing projects because we needed to refer, we, we didn't want the information about who was doing what like buried in various documents of the repo. So the README is where we keep the list of members. So I added, um, the before the, I added this list of ongoing projects. So I sort of filled in other projects as well so that the, um, the policy team is highlighted here. There's an open PR, which is describing the policy team um, that hasn't finalized yet. So this was kind of a comment from that PR that I just figured I'd pick up at the same time so that to surface that security assessments isn't the only thing we're doing. And then um, related to this PR is um, that Justin Capos is the facilitator, and now we have a co-chair representative. So the idea is that, I, and this has been happening informally, but of the three co-chairs, if there's anything that, you know, if anybody has a question that needs to be either from the TOC about the security, um, security assessments or from the security assessment team to the TOC, that I'm 
you know, we have these chair syncs with the TOC liaisons and generally the chairs um, attend the TOC meetings. So then that should streamline communications. Of course, anybody should feel free to talk to anyone, but then I'm the official point person if it comes to either contention or just making sure that communication happens by mentioning things in the various meetings that I'm in. So, um, so then that's basically establishing the fact that there will always be a co-chair who is, you know, the responsible one. Um, of course, any chair um, can chime in and help, but it's good to have so that we don't drop the ball, have one of us be responsible to the group. Um, and then, um, and then JJ has been doing this informally where he syncs with Howard on the policy stuff now and then. And so we're kind of generally having this, um, we, and this is reflective of the project process that is um, described as somewhere in our governance. So, um, so then, oops. So how do I navigate this thing? Oh, so if I go to security assessments, then, oh great, we're in this context. So now there is an intake process document. And um, there's a lot of words here. I welcome reviews, but I think we've, we, we need to go through final wordsmithing. But basically, this is the highlights that um, a, a precondition to starting an assessment is that the project is either already a CNCF project or it needs to assert that it's cloud native. Um, so we're still like, it's not like we have a really clear definition by some people's perspective. Some people think it's obvious what cloud native is. And when it comes down to it, and somebody's, if somebody asserts that's not so cloud native, then usually there's a little confusion there. Um, so I think that, um, you know, that's something we'll just iterate on that definition. And then um, the key thing that is actually blocking most of the projects right now is that um, there needs to be a, both an identified project lead and a written self-assessment. And those are sort of the external things. So that once those exist, then our security team um, like comes into action. Um, and Justin maybe can chime in a little bit about how that happens. Um, and then, um, the priority, so these are the priorities we've agreed on with our TOC liaisons, which is um, the top priority, which actually has never happened, but we want to reserve the right for the TOC to say, okay, here is our top priority, put it at the top of your list. Um, and with the agreement that they're not going to interrupt something that's ongoing, this is just for the queue of not started things. Um, so they can just request that something jump the queue or be inserted in it and then but generally we don't we have not gotten very um pointed feedback from them they're just like great you're doing stuff um and so the other the next priority is that if something has already received a security audit we are generally deprioritizing them but if a year has passed since their audit and we want to like pay attention to them. So, um, and this is more of a bootstrapping because this assessment process is new. A bunch of projects already had an audit when we started this process. Um, and then um, CNCF projects that request a review are next, right? Or they could be invited by a SIG member. We could just, we may occasionally want to or need to do a little outreach. And then they're generally prioritized by project maturity. We do graduated projects before Sandbox. And then lastly, we are, um, you know, it's totally fine if we decide it's a good idea to do non-CNCF projects or for them to approach us, we would just prioritize CNCF ones above that generally. So, um, and then there's a little note about this annual reviewal idea. There was some discussion should be biannually or so forth. I kind of think that annual is like, it's more likely that somebody was around who did it last time. And um, I think that for a lot of projects that may be just a, hey, every, you know, like the project says, uh, here's a PR updating my assessment. And somebody says, okay, you fixed a few bugs and it all looks good, right? If there's no features added, there may, it, it I expect it to be a very lightweight process. And even some features may not really affect the um, assessment itself. Um, so the big news 
is that we now have a GitHub project that- um, can, I, can I jump in and just say one thing real quick? Please. All right. I, our goal with all of this isn't to have there be like a big um, bureaucratic set of rules that follows every possible way of doing it. It's just to give some like loose guidance. So um, don't interpret anything said here as um, we have tied our hands in a way that we shall exactly do only these things. Um, like fundamentally, for instance, let's say that this 50 spotter assessment, which is about to start, you know, um, we have a hard time getting the lead reviewer for it. And, you know, some other project comes along and we have all the people ready to go. You know, it, you know, I don't think these guidelines say exactly what happens in that case. And that's good because, you know, we'll have to play it by ear. We may have multiple assessments going on at the same time, even if the groups are disjoint or if the load seems reasonable or one stalls. So just treat these more as thoughts about how this might go rather than, you know, a shall, a must, um, you know, a sort of thing at, in, in terms of a standards document. Thanks, Justin. I think that, that's a really important point. Like we're trying to get things written down to help people understand generally what we're doing and to get, to align us so that we can just, you know, sometimes it's non-controversial and we just are like, okay, well, how are we going to arrange these things? Um, typically, it uh, so far, it's been fairly non-controversial. Um, but it, you know, it sort of establishes guidance. So, so are there questions about this priority list before I go on to logistics? All right, so we have this. I think the biggest question is, um, we should just have people comment on the pull request with all the questions they have and things like that, or just go in and do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I just thought sometimes there's, uh, just depending yeah. if everybody has live stuff. Cool. Yeah. So don't be shy to weigh in and do that. Um, you'll see a big chain of those kind of uh, edits from a bunch of people already. So. And actually, there. Speaking of that, there was a comment from you, Justin, that I had a question about, which was um, way at the bottom here. Um, that's I think a detail I have to find. Um, so, um, this is about the security audit being higher prior, the projects that have received a CNCF security audit, I guess it's the, um, two versus three. Um, and like what I wanted to I'd, I'd be just sort of interested in different people's perspective on this. Not that, you know, like we, like Justin said, this isn't like super important, just good to have feedback um, where I think mostly we're bottlenecked by bandwidth and getting every bit, getting the whole project together. But like if there were a project, like Spiffy is inspired come to us and they've written a self-assessment and that's, um, that's a big unblocker. But if there was another project, right? I guess it's been about a year since we started this process. So almost all, you know, we've got a queue of like five projects that have received audits, but haven't, don't have an assessment. And what I was thinking is there's a value to the assessment, which is completely different from the audit and and some value to having that body of work. Um, whereas something that hasn't given like much attention to these security things, the assessment is a lot more work. And so I was kind of thinking these would be like sort of easy to knock out, but maybe that's not the price. Like, so there's like, there's the value to the project and then there's the value to the outside world, which wants to take a look at a, a number of projects yeah. and be able to assess them quickly. So. And, and let me be clear about my my comment. I'm not saying that three should be higher than two, but I don't actually think an order here really matters. I mean, I think saying these are things we could take into account and we'll adjust makes more sense than trying to decide on a rigid order now when we haven't, I think we haven't seen enough. It, if, 
if this were becoming a very politicized problem that projects were fighting and we needed someone to step in because there was an issue, then I think I, I'm, I'm all for them trying to set up a process. But I think we're kind of trying to put structure around something that I think that, that I think also it. that I think that fairly soon almost all the projects will have had a security audit, so it won't be so relevant. I don't because think they're going so. through them. They're going through them pretty quickly now. So I talked. So I, there's only been about six, and there's like thirty-five projects. No, 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 no. There's 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 at least ten. Well, in any case, and there are a lot more audits to do than have been done. And what I talked to Chris about, Chris A about, um, in uh, a KubeCon is of making a, because now he's got a whole queue of audits, right? And that it would potentially streamline the process to now that we have an assessment process to say the next person who wants an audit to do an assessment first. And then we can get into that pipeline kind of thing. Does that make sense, Justin Cormack? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, we could do it explicitly by that. Yeah. Because it like sort of the, the assessment cues up the like initial narrative of the audit in some ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think that, yeah, if, if we coordinate it, I think it was a bit of a problem with Falco where we were almost did them simultaneously. Yeah, that sort of like it's in this cusp of us getting our process together. Great, any other uh, thoughts on this? Thanks, Justin Kaplis, appreciate your, both of, both of your Justin's perspective on this. So um, Justin Kaplis and I got together earlier this week and um, made this project where we, the idea, so we have these blocked ones which are generally blocked by, um, it's, you know, there's a tag for need self-assessment if it becomes a contentious, if it becomes a bottleneck, then we could have like need lead reviewer. Right now there's a small number of them. So we can just look at the issues and figure it out. Um, and then Spiffy Spire did their um, self-assessment um, this week. So they're now in the backlog. Um, and so Justin Capos, is there anything that you wanna like sort of chime in on, on things that you would like people to do or help with or just perspective yeah. on this thing. I'd like people who are interested to please go on these issues here, um, the assessment issues uh, and say, hey, I'm willing to do this. You do not have to be experienced in this since there's only two of them that have been completed. There's a total of, I don't know, six people or something that have ever done an assessment. So don't worry too much about that. Um, even if you feel like I haven't really audited code or really know what to look at or look for, even just saying, hey, I kind of know what I'm doing, but I just want to help out as I can. That's useful because, you know, you'll build that skill set. And then, you know, by the time some of these other projects are ready, maybe you're ready to take a more active role and maybe even lead a future assessment. And then, do you know by memory, Justin, which ones are in particular need? I think. Um, I think we ideally want at least one more person for Spiffy Spire, um, especially because I, I did almost like the prototype of this myself. Um, so I, I think this will be a pretty easy one to do, but um, like it's a, I, I almost didn't want to be on it again because I've already kind of, you know, given all my feedback uh, in the past, but I also wanted to do it because I wanted to see how easy it was to redo it and how much the project had changed. Um, so having at least one other person on here, I think would be really helpful as an additional reviewer. Uh, the other projects were missing a mix of things. In some cases we're missing a lead, in some cases we're missing a couple of reviewers. Um, so, you know, just, uh, just take a look and see what's of interest and we'd love to have people uh, jump in and, and help out. Uh, and I appreciate everyone who has already volunteered. Um, one thing that we will not do, if, if you end up, do end up signing up for two things, you know, or something like I think I have, um, we're not going to go and try to make you have to do two things in the same two weeks or something crazy like that. Um, 
but you know, also don't sign up for everything because at some point we might try to do at least some minor parallelization, but we'll keep in mind who's on what as a way of prioritizing it. And then um, a few people have asked whether we're doing stuff over the holidays. And my assumption is that we won't really kick off any of these assumptions until the new year or somebody correct me if that's not correct for one of these. If yes. it's the case that that Brandon and Evan are excited to work over the holidays and that, you know, because they're going to be doing this initial dumb question phase, they can kick that off whenever, if they want to wait until after, they can wait until after. Um, but like Emily, myself and whoever else uh, chimes in and wants to join will be, will be helpful um, in those early phases, but most of our work will go a, a little later in the process. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be probably traveling in the next couple of weeks. So um, it's not a good time for me to kind of be uh, unresponsive then. So um, I I think that probably after the new year, so the first couple of weeks of January, so the first week of January, I'll be free. Um, so if uh, I'll co coordinate with Evan um, and... And Brandon, off, yeah. I know we have this sort of weird before the holidays things, but I would love if you would be willing to be a, a little bit of a guinea pig to pick the moment, the pick the start date, right? So that we can track how long it takes. Because we, I think we're, we're working on um, a t like a, having a reliable timeline for these things. Th this will be a weird one though, because they've already effectively done this, almost like the assessment before. Yes, and okay, but yeah, yeah, okay, okay, sorry. The things that took a long time were due to in the in OPA in my mind were due to our lack of coordination at the end about like who was doing the slide thing and so forth. So I think there are some optimizations that have nothing to do with the content, but our like handoff and who does what. That um, since Brendan has also been very involved in like working on our repo and our triage and the GitHub issues, I think, is really well positioned to like anticipate where we might not have a clean handoff and tighten that up. Because this should take much less time, but like we will have to make sure it doesn't. All right, so please chime in on things. And now, um, to the next agenda item. Security landscape update, Justin. Have okay. Us. Us. Yes. Um, so I worked a bit with Brandon on this and also had some nice feedback um, from uh, a few other folks on a really rough write-up we did. Basically, the update I wanted to give is, number one, we had discussed giving a broader update at this meeting. And I, I think, um, we're in agreement that we have a good concept and we're really happy with it, but we actually want to flesh it out a little more than we've been able to. So we'd actually like to request that Amy or someone at the CNCF uh, get us a little bit of um, someone who has some of that nice kind of JavaScript -y foo thing where we can do little images that you click on that expand out and talk about things as part of the process. And so if, that is um, something we could arrange then in, you know, I guess depending on, uh, since we're gonna be busy with Spiffy Spire, depending on like how all that shakes out. But I feel like we could get something together to show the group um, pretty quickly, just doing, you know, 10% of the actual work that would need to be, so people can take a look at it and, uh, and then understand if they think the concept is, is really solid. Um, but it's one of these things that, you know, either that or I can spend 30 minutes trying to explain to everybody with postcard, post-it notes and stuff when otherwise it would be like a 30 second thing you play around with. So I think getting the CNCF to do some work, um, to help us would, would be a good ask here. So, um, so I think we need to, maybe we can like offline figure out what that is, but like, you know, just also like, does the group want to hear? Anything more before we advocate spending? I think we they have people on staff who can help with this, but um, just in terms of priorities and you know, I don't think we have anything else we're asking for money for, but or staff time for. Um, any feedback? 
Frank. So is, is the idea to hold off from seeding content uh, once we have a, a framework to present it in or? Yeah, so what we'll basically do, yeah, what we'll basically do is take a small part of like what would happen in a cloud, in the cloud native landscape for how this would all work. We'll do a very tiny part, seed some initial content at the end as a draft to show how this would look, how this would work, what the utility of it would be. And then if we all like it, then we go ahead and we flesh the whole thing out. And if we want to make changes, it's easier to see um, the limitations and problems and ways in which we make changes with something that's more concrete rather than, you know, look at, you know, imagine you have this post-it node and imagine you have that post-it node and so on kind of thing. So, yeah. And so for folks who are new, we, um, about it, I don't know, nine months ago or so, a uh, small sub team came up with a security landscape structure. What are the categories? And our goal was to make it so that more often than not, one project would be in one category, but that these are, are these are kind of different way of looking at the whole cloud native security landscape, a cloud native land, like it's completely different from the cloud native landscape because we want to sort of look at the security projects and potentially the non-security projects differently, right? Um, with like, you know, kind of, it's not like security and policy is one thing, right? There's many things and people need to know how to apply these projects. And so this has been, um, different people have had different perspectives and, and on that maybe this isn't a good way to look at it, or maybe these categories aren't explained well. And so, by, I, I like this idea, Justin, which I, if I'm interpreting this correctly, is that you, have, you and Brandon have some different ideas about how to adjust the, the buckets and the landscape structure, and that it would be easier to talk about it if there were projects in the buckets. That, that's true. It's, it's a bit more than that. It's, um, and I think it's one of the things that's easier to see, but it, it'll be an easier way for people to find things an easier way for people to understand the pros and cons and an easier way to just sort of locate in and wrap their head around what they should do from security, what security products protect against, what they don't protect against and so on in the cloud native space. So like I said, we're gonna do this for a tiny part. We're gonna do this for things that are kind of in the CICD, like, you know, Git development, stuff like that stages of it, cause it's just easier for us to, to work it because that's part of where our, our expertise is. And then I think then it'll become a lot clearer, like the way we've been this and how we're cutting things. Great. So it's sort of like a prototype of a way to Exactly. Use. Brendan, do you have anything to add there? Yeah. And I think another kind of um, direction that we're seeing with this is by looking at the processes um, of cloud native and how security applies to this it kind of provides a good foundation for uh, if and when we want to write a white paper as well. It, it, it lets us give, um, it gives an opportunity to think about a lot of the, the details there. Um, yeah, I think that like we, that's a, that's a good thing to raise. Um, the, the idea was that the, this landscape or the, or some thinking from the landscape would go into the white paper, so they are kind of dovetailed together, and we haven't quite figured out like are they cross-linked or is part of the content go in one or the other? But it's part of the point of the white paper is to understand the landscape, and so they're very related. Great. Um, anything else on that topic? No, thank you. I need drop though, so thank you. All right, thanks, Justin. So, um, quick call out for help on logistics. Um, we don't have to spend a lot of time unless, unless people have great ideas, but like if we could have an automated markdown linter with link checker, it would be amazing. I don't know if people know of these things or somebody would volunteer to look for one, but um, the, we, we're we a bunch of technical people with tools. I'll volunteer. Yay. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll write up an issue with the kinds of things that we um, are looking for. 
and assign it to you. Or you could write an, if you would open an issue, then I can assign it to you. Otherwise I have to get you to comment on it before I assign it to you. Okay, I'll go ahead and open it. Thank you. Um, then there was a, a comment on the chat that maybe there are some transcription tools we could use instead of scribes. And I was wondering if anybody knows it. Robert, are you here still? Yeah, and, well, I know AWS has one, um, but uh, obviously it's a commercial tool. So I don't know if there's anything open source or we could, you know, someone, I could kick in some money for a commercial tool, but whatever, it just might make it easier. If there's a commercial tool that's, you know, well, it's reasonably, I mean, I think we should look for open source stuff because we're kind of open sourcey, but I, you know, we use open, you know, we use Netlify, which we pay for. We use, I mean, I don't know, maybe we're under their open source license, but the CNCF does pay for something. So, um, and then some of the commercial tools will make them free for open source pro pro products, pro open source projects and nonprofits. So um, that can be looked, would you, are you volunteering to look into that, Robert? Uh, sure. And I think Kapil, you're from AWS. So I don't know if you're still on, but maybe we can chat offline about what there might be. Sure. Yeah, too. And Robert, will you open an issue? Uh, yes, I'll do that right now. Fabulous. So then, uh, Brandon. Remember, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, before I get to that, I remember there was a PR that you opened about the transcription stuff. Um, was that from the service that you you mentioned that CNCF provides? Well, that's um, we used a service, um, and so that. If we had that, that's very asynchronous. Like you put in a ticket and you know, you put in an order and you get it within 24 hours. Um, I think there are also real time systems that may be lower quality, but may be as good as any of us typing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and so I think that'd be like, I think there's a, there's sort of two aspects of it, right? One is the real time meeting notes kind of aspect, um, or just getting it automated so that it would happen at post meeting. Hmm. Um, so I think we, the service that I, we were using for that is not practical for this. It's not just expense. It's also like having a human who has to go submit a ticket and you know the back and forth so we were only doing that for presentations where it's really high value and the idea okay. is to take those transcripts and turn them into something that would be a page on our microsite um but if we could do it routinely both in terms of it's if there was something that was more real timey or less expensive or we could do it in an automated way um right after the zoom meeting it you know real time would be amazing we don't need as high fidelity for something that is meeting notes as opposed to presentation. Uh, so we upload the meetings to YouTube and I thought they had some sort of transcription facilities as well. I have seen that on YouTube as a user, but I haven't seen how to make that happen. So maybe people could, if you if you're know of that, maybe we can chime in on the issue and we can sort of take our collective knowledge. Because so I think also that sometimes I've looked at things several years ago and then new features appear and I'm not aware of them. So it could be, yeah, that we just have to turn on a checkbox on YouTube, which would be great. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think a little Google searching and <laughs> um, looking at what options are out there would be very fruitful. Um, All right, so yeah. Um, so being at the other end of um, the globe now, I get reminded about meeting times being not very practical for the east side. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering whether, I know we talked about this before a little bit, where we wanted to rotate the time so that we could get some participants from Asia, especially, you know, when we have um, the KubeCons in China. Um, so I'm wondering whether, you know, how we should go, whether we, we want to do this and whether we want to kind of like maybe do a rotating thing where you have a meeting 
um, in one time zone and then just has like two set times and just rotate between the two of them. I think it would be amazing to be more geographically inclusive. I've just struggled to know how to manage that. <laughs> um, one idea that I like I just thought of while you were talking, I'm curious what other people think, is it could be like a round KubeCon because we have like, we tend to have KubeCon centric conversations before and after KubeCon. So you could say that like, a month before and two months after, or like whatever the right interval is, we sync with the KubeCon time zone. I like that. So then this meeting would like rotate, there'd be like three times that we pick as friendly to the KubeCon time zone plus another. Right. And then we could make sure that we have um, like, so like, I, like we've been talking about like, how like Dan's chair um, term, he, he, he picked the short straw and he will be, <laughs> or the long straw. I don't know. Maybe I got the short straw. Anyway, he's going to be, um, his term is up in um, the mid year. And, you know, I think in my dreams, there would be a future where we, we have a chair from, we have chairs in, across different geographies, right? So that, it's you, it, so that everybody doesn't have to travel across the world. You know, I don't know. Then it's sort of like it, it, it sort of helps the, the local events. And now they're doing these um, forums. So what do people think about that kind of synchronization and rotating around the time zone? Or are there other ideas about how to make it feel more stable? It seems relatively fair and motivated by practical concerns. Okay. So I think we should make it, Brandon, would you, I think we should make it a suggestion on GitHub to yeah. make sure that we get input from people. And would you volunteer to actually pick some times that are yeah, like, and that. how exactly it would work? I think it's just, you know, there's a lot of different ways to make it work that would be fair and appropriate i just you know somebody needs to write it down but yeah, just in a github a, issue yeah i'll create an issue with kind of like the generic problem statement and then while i try and figure out how it will work i think if if we get ideas from people that'll be great as well great super did i hear somebody else say something okay so cloud Native Security Day, Emily. Um, so we wrapped up our retrospective a few weeks ago. My time is a little weird. Um, but we finished our retrospective. It's linked in the meeting notes for anybody that wants to take a look at it. We had some great conversations about how we can iterate and improve on the next one for um, KubeCon Europe. So take a look there. Um, we're, you, there's also a new ticket, number 305, also linked in the It's Coming text. So if you have some more ideas about what we can do to improve it that we missed in some of our feedback, feel free to comment on the ticket. We'll be going through them. We're looking to start scheduling timeframes to meet up and take, how, take the information from the retrospective and how we can apply it and incorporate it into the KubeCon Europe. Um, I see that there's a comment about red team, blue team demo session. I think we had that in the original ask, not specific to chat ops, um, but within the submission content. And I'm, I'm not clear if we got anybody that was interested in it, um, but definitely comment on the ticket with that information. Great, thanks. Any questions, suggestions, thoughts for Cloud News Security Day team? And is this a link to the GitHub issue? Can you link to the GitHub issue about um, the Amsterdam Cloud News Security Day so that if people have other questions they can it's, chime in? It's there in the meeting agenda. Wonder it's coming. Oh, okay, great. 
um, the if so right now I believe Michael and I have both agreed to coordinate and plan and run the event again um, but we are definitely looking for more volunteers to help while it is it was rewarding to see how many individuals gave submissions to it trying to cram in a few people reviewing all of the submissions was a little challenging so if you're up for volunteering on something small like reviewing submissions with us or assisting with planning or even day of coordination and all hands on deck that would be fabulous please also comment in the ticket we also have this idea i want to mention to everybody that um, of having more of the sig members like actively participating in like distributing them, like having some responsibility to be there as somebody who would um, kind of be visible and tell people about the SIG and connect people to each other and so forth. We haven't quite figured out what the responsibilities are, but um, so, and also the CNCF does do travel grants. I think it might be an opportunity for us to kind of reach out to our members or prospective members who are in Europe and um, see if that we can have good representation of the SIG there. And if there are people who would like to be involved and willing to volunteer who, um, you know, might need some financing, there are grants if we get our act together early enough to ask. So I want to kind of put that out there um, with the caveat that, you know, like Emily and Michael are still working on like the what and the details. But if people are, if you or somebody you know is in Europe, in the region and is like, I don't know if I can go because my company won't sponsor it or, you know, like financing would matter, then, um, then definitely would love to have someone help think through how we could organize some, you know, that. Um, though anybody who's been active certainly can submit a travel grant to CNCF and we'd be supportive, of, at least verbally supportive of that. All right. Any um, last announcement? So we're eight minutes before the hour. We can definitely end early, but I want to give a chance to open the floor if there are questions that um, we haven't covered or thoughts that people want to add or announcements. All right. Thanks, everybody. Oh, and we will not be meeting on Christmas Day. <laughs> In fact, we have canceled the two next meetings, and so our next meeting is January 8th. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ash, for taking notes. Bye. Great job, Ash. Thanks. <laughs>